Influence. It's a disease that killed Spaniards in the 20s. Nope, it's something else. Google defines influence as a long sentence you already basically know. But what you might not know is exactly how much effort some people go through to exert it, or how much money they spend. And telling you about these two things is really all this video is about. Because we all know the wealthy in this country have a lot of influence over our politics and our culture, and also everything left after that. So it's not like a video about that would be exposing some well-kept secret or anything. But what this video can do is give you an idea of scale. We've all heard the so-and-so spent $10 billion this election stat and thought, meh, that sucks. But hardly anyone has seen diagrams like this, or like this, or like this, about the networks of influence that those election stats don't capture. And that's a shame. Because when you go past the big number and get into the details of how influence is actually carried out and where the money goes, there's a lot more to it than most people realize. This right here is a really, really good visual representation of the wealthy's areas of influence. And I made it myself, and I got very positive feedback on it. And today, we're gonna go over it and fill stuff in using just two families, the Cokes and the Wilkeses. We could do more, but you'll see why just two is more than enough in a sec. All we're gonna do this video is list their different methods of influence, how much they're spending, and its effects. And that's it. Because honestly, I don't need to do anything else to make my point. The facts speak for themselves once I speak to them. Let's start with the Wilkeses. This part of the video overlaps a bit with what my buddy Ugopnik did a few months ago. So if you want a more detailed look, go check out his video right here. Anyway, the Wilkeses are two brothers with some very far right politics who made their billions in the fracking industry. So far so good. These guys could have been happy just casually destroying the place I live, Earth and you probably would have never heard their name. But they cleverly realized they could use that money from fracking to destroy the other place I live, my brain. Because if you've never heard of the Wilkeses before now, you've certainly heard of the online media industries that they fund, PragerU and The Daily Wire. In 2013, the Wilkeses dumped over $6.5 million into PragerU, and in 2015, they funded the creation of The Daily Wire with $4.7 million in seed money. Let me tell you right now, nobody making socialist content has ever gotten that kind of seed money to do something similar. But we'll get back to that later. What matters right now is what PragerU and The Daily Wire do with all that money. If, like me, you haven't checked in a while, get ready. They push the LGBT grooming narrative and call for increased state violence against those in the queer community. They've said the gay community was, quote, a hell of a lot better off when they were oppressed by the heterosexual monogamous than when they're allied with trans activists, repeating the myth that the biggest threat to queer people is other queer people, not far-right pundits literally calling for them to be imprisoned and executed. They've claimed the 2020 election was fraudulent. No surprises there. They have segments talking about how they wish oh so badly that they could say the n-word, and that shopping at Target makes you quote, gay and a pervert. That one's new. And they're all for book bans and book burnings because the Bible supposedly says that's okay. That climate change is a hoax, or the science just isn't in yet, so don't do anything. Wonder if the fracking billionaires like that one. And they've recently also casually dropped that they believe women are quote, disproportionately wrecking the West. And I'm gonna stop here because one, all these examples are from just one month, May 2023 or thereabouts, and two, you get the idea. These online media outlets funded and owned by the Wilkeses are broadcasting some of the most untrue, hateful, and oftentimes outright fascist rhetoric. And I'm using that word correctly, you can fight me in the comments. And they're doing so to audiences that are not just massive, but can actually rival more established media. You've seen the obscene subscriber counts of channels like PragerU and Ben Shapiro, but that's only giving you a small idea of these institutions' reach. On Facebook, for example, The Daily Wire often finds a larger audience than The New York Times, The Washington Post, NBC News, and CNN combined, according to this NPR article from 2021. Not only do these online media have a huge role in shaping the national dialogue by nurturing and then feeding moral panics up to larger institutions like Fox, 
who will then encourage far-right vigilantes into acts of stochastic terrorism, these online personalities' influence helps them shape actual, real-life laws. Recently, for example, The Daily Wire's Matt Walsh was a big part of the reason that Bill HB1 passed in Florida, a bill banning gender-affirming healthcare for those under 18. So, you know, money well spent for the Wilkeses. But not just by the Wilkeses. Although the Kochs aren't direct investors in either PragerU or The Daily Wire based on what we could find online, one of the Kochs' nonprofits, Americans for Prosperity, and don't worry, we'll get back to them later, have campaigned on behalf of Ron DeSantis. And he gave over $100,000 to The Daily Wire last year. But that's obviously not all. Prominent Daily Wire figures like Ben Shapiro have received speaking fees from the Koch-funded Young America's Foundation and also Koch-funded Turning Point USA. You can already kind of see the network of mutual support appearing here. But we're not done yet. What about more traditional media, like the press? Well, these conservative infinite money glitches are there too. For example, Charles Koch has funded Tucker Carlson's media company, The Daily Caller. You might not have heard about The Caller before, but in 2017, it got $980,000 from a combination of funds from the creatively named Charles Koch Institute and the Charles Koch Foundation. And before you get worried, let me reassure you. They do the exact same thing as The Daily Wire and PragerU, just mostly in article format. Their tabloid-style articles are always some variant of the barbarians are at the border. It's time to freak out. Queer people are groomers. Trump did nothing wrong. And given that last headline, it probably won't surprise you to find out that on top of the nearly $1 million from Charles Koch, $150,000 of the Daily Caller's funding came from the Trump campaign. And together, those two investments made up over 97% of the Daily Caller's revenue that year. In other words, Carlson's paper simply wouldn't exist without the Kochs and Trump money. And it's pretty obvious what kind of messages that money is buying and spreading. But even though Carlson is a celebrity, the Daily Caller really isn't. Even with a million dollars in a single year, it's a relatively fringe media outlet catering to an audience already convinced of some pretty extreme far-right politics. You probably hadn't heard of it before this video. But what you definitely have heard of is The Atlantic. And the Kochs are there too. We've now entered into the real big boy press world, by the way. This is a major, generally well-respected press outlet. And, well, some of their journalists have either gotten cash prizes for the Koch Brothers Reason Foundation, or are themselves heads of Koch-funded organizations like FIRE, the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression. And what kinds of articles do these Koch-affiliated journalists write in The Atlantic? As you might expect, given everything else in this video, they talk about how free speech is under threat and you can't say anything anymore. While, you know, getting paid quite a bit to say exactly that in a major magazine. And because this really is quite a tight-knit group, in the process of writing these articles, they happen to stumble into defending guys like Jordan Peterson, a guy who really can't say anything because of the darn woke mob. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Like with a lot of other conservative ventures in the free speech circles, this strategy funnels a mainstream audience, in this case that of a pretty legitimate magazine, to a climate change denier and well-known transphobe also getting his own cut of the Koch fund by painting him as a victim. Truly, no one could have seen this coming. And I chose to talk about The Atlantic here because it bridges the gap to the whole Daily Wire crowd quite nicely. But The Atlantic is far from the only press outlet the Kochs are putting money into. There are plenty of outlets and organizations getting the attention of the billionaire brothers. Another big one on the list, for example, is Time Inc., which the Kochs put $650 million into the purchase of in 2017. To give you an idea, Time Inc. used to own magazines like Time, of course, but also Fortune, People, Sports Illustrated, Essence, and the list keeps on going. Just to kind of recap, because I've been going pretty quickly here, Right now, looking at only two families and in only two sectors of influence, online video and traditional media, we already have so much to go off of. A ton of money and huge audiences to match. The Kochs and the Wilkeses have, thus far in the video, already spent hundreds of millions to either completely command or have a pretty direct impact on the editorial line of massive media organizations reaching millions of people in the US. 
These organizations then use their funds to spread homophobic, transphobic, and climate-skeptic rhetoric, or will serve as a bridge to other figures receiving conservative funding, like Jordan Peterson, who will make these statements more aggressively than better respected press can afford to. And by now, you might be wondering how this all happens. I've been using the Cokes or the Wilkeses as shorthand, but it's probably pretty obvious that they're not out there doing all these deals themselves. So what's going on? This last column is kind of a grab bag. Throughout this video, you've heard me bring up a number of different organizations. Americans for Prosperity, the Reason Foundation, the Charles Koch Foundation and Institute, FIRE, and so on. All of these organizations' funding can be traced back to a couple sources. Another set of organizations with names like Stand Together, Donors Trust, TC4 Trust, or Americans for Prosperity. These are all pretty much interchangeable organizations that are most visibly funded by the Kochs, but usually also get donations from hundreds of other wealthy conservatives and so-called free market advocates. Take Stand Together as a quick example. It's one of these centers from which a lot of the influence money flows down to the smaller orgs that have come up throughout the last 15 minutes. On their website, Stand Together describes themselves as a quote, philanthropic community, but that's a little vague. On their tax documents, they're a little more explicit. Stand Together's mission, in their own words, is to, quote, advance its members' common business interest by advancing the principles of free markets and a free society. You get the idea. Philanthropy, business owners making more money. Potato, potato. And this goes for most of these organizations, which are almost all nonprofits that, quote, do virtually nothing but pass grants through to other politically active 501c4 organizations. So what else do they do when they move these funds around if it's not to either of the other two media categories? Well, for starters, they'll fund astroturf groups like Speech First, a student group, quote, defending free speech on college campuses, that happens to get funding and professional leadership money up the chain from Donors Trust. Or, still on college campuses, Koch-led funds will be directed at academic departments. To take just one example, because there are a lot of these, Koch-funded organizations will finance research centers like the Mercatus Center at George Mason University, giving their organizations oversight over faculty hiring decisions and even some student admissions, according to this article in the New York Times. What else? Of course, I couldn't make this video without acknowledging the dozens of think tanks propped up in all 50 states which got a combined $83 million from Koch-funded orgs and their allies in 2011. Important names include the Heritage Foundation, the Cato Institute, and the Manhattan Institute. You'll remember the Heritage Foundation from every piece of climate change denial research ever, the Cato Institute for also denying climate change, and the Manhattan Institute for being the place where the critical race theory moral panic began. But the story doesn't end there. These think tanks, alongside a number of the other organizations in what has been called the Coctopus, are deeply involved in yet another type of influence, lobbying which they do at every level of the American government. Through the Americans for Prosperity group in particular, the Kochs and their fossil fuel allies have spent hundreds of millions of dollars on attack ads against Democratic candidates, most visibly against Obama in 2012. They have also poured a lot of money into the campaign funds of conservatives at the far right of the Republican Party, after failing to successfully prop up the Tea Party in order to push Republicans closer to the extreme. You might say they succeeded. And there is so much more from the Mont Pelerin Society to, to, to the NRA to countless hundreds of other student groups, politicians, media organizations, nonprofits. There is truly no limit to how much time you can spend hopping from one organization to another, just following the rabbit hole of funding diagrams down to groups in your state, in your city, where you went to college. I really just, I can't do this justice. I mean, I've given you the diagrams, I've given you examples, I've given you lists to try to fill this all out, but there's just so much more that I couldn't fit into this video. Anti-Muslim, anti-LGBT groups just remembered. There. Between 2014 and 2018, Donors Trust and Donors Capital Fund gave, quote, $13 million to organizations that profess anti-Muslim, anti-immigrant, or anti-LGBTQ sentiments, including more than $2.7 million to nonprofits considered hate groups by SPLC. 
you're just gonna have to trust me that what I've talked about represents maybe, and this is admittedly just a guess, 5% of what these two families are out there doing. And this is what I want to end the video on. There are a lot of people, and a lot of them billionaires, contributing to the various organizations I've mentioned who also have organizations of their own, who have companies that advertise in hundreds of media outlets, who have charitable donations going to university econ departments, and who have nonprofit astroturf groups staging protests near you. It's simply impossible for me, or for anyone, to catalog it, and even more difficult for the anti-capitalist left to match this kind of influence. This is only something that billionaires can do. And billionaires tend to like being billionaires. So yes, I know that Democrats have their own mega-donors, and their own NGOs and astroturf groups. But the left doesn't. Not with this kind of scale. There aren't billionaires willing to fund a network this powerful that would advocate for their abolition. And as a fun exercise to close out the video, let me give you an idea of what it would take to try and match what the right has without being a capitalist billionaire. What you're going to want to do is take your salary and set it all aside. Don't spend any money whatsoever. Do that for 10 years. Now find a way to multiply that by 100. Either wait 90 more years, or maybe invest in stocks or something. I don't know. Multiply it by 100 somehow. If my math is right, you should now have roughly $56 million set aside. That's good. That's great. I'm really proud of you. You're 0.1% of the way there. One of the things right-wing media does really well is establishing life-or-death stakes. It's us versus the mainstream media. Us versus the groomers, the migrants, the far-left communist democrats. Whatever the hot-button issue of the week is. Let me show you what I mean. Here we have three examples of right-wing coverage of the same story. Republicans introducing a bill that would make it harder to pursue climate change prevention. Notice how the story is framed. Each article uses wording like perceived climate catastrophe, ignoring actual emergencies, and climate change pearl clutching. If you read each of these stories, not one of them mentions that the science surrounding climate change is indisputable. They all just attempt to convince the reader that the Democrats are crazy, and that no real American cares about this climate stuff. This is the case in every single piece of right-wing coverage of this story, and most of them link to each other somewhere in the piece, reinforcing a network of far-right news consumption. They all attempt to make the reader angry or shocked at how out of touch those dirty communist democrats are, that they would dare suggest that climate change is real. And this is the approach they take with every topic. Everything is turned into a cultural struggle of us versus them. The key here is to remember who benefits from this kind of coverage. And Ground News goes a long way towards helping the reader understand what interests are funding each of these outlets. This is something I get asked about a lot. How do I help parents or friends break out of their little propaganda bubble? It's great to analyze an event like this, examining wording to look for bias, and determining who's behind each outlet, but that's a lot of work, and none of us have time for that. That's why I always recommend people check out Ground News, because it has a ton of really useful tools to make building media literacy skills a lot easier. Ground News is a web and mobile app that aggregates over 50,000 news sources and offers intuitive, easy-to-understand comparison tools. So you can do things like what we did here. See how a particular story is being spun by various interests. You can also see the political leaning, factuality rating, and ownership of every single news source right in the app. No tedious research required. Now, full disclosure, as a socialist, I obviously disagree with the placement of some of these outlets. For example, I don't think CNN should be placed as far left as it is. But honestly, this might be a good thing when trying to educate your friends and family. If you come at them with, well, actually, CNN is a right-wing network, they're not going to take you seriously. Ground News is the perfect first baby step towards media literacy. If you're looking for a way to give your friends and family a great set of tools to understand media bias, who it serves, and how to spot it, I highly recommend you check out Ground News at the link below. They're currently offering a 30% discount for their Vantage subscription to all Second Thought viewers, which you can only redeem at ground.news slash second thought, so be sure to follow that link. Give it a shot. I promise it'll make your life a whole lot easier.